Hello, everybody. My name is Melissa Palmer. I'm a senior technologist here on the product strategy team at Veeam, and I am joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Kirsten Stoner. I'm a technical analyst on the product strategy team here as well. And we're going to talk a little bit about Veeam One today, and we have a little theme that you're going to see throughout my presentations now to next. So we're actually going to start with our demos in the current version of the product, but we're also going to give you a nice sneak peek into V11. So if you're not familiar with Veeam One, uh, it does have a great ton of capabilities. I know between Kirsten and I, we do a lot with the product and we all kind of have our favorites. Uh, I am really big into the intelligent automation piece. How about you, Kirsten? What's your kind of favorite on this list? I would say my favorite would be the documentation and analysis, just really being able to put historical data in a structured form and then make decisions based off that is really helpful. Exactly. So we can monitor for critical issues. Uh, like Kirsten said, we have great reporting, documentation and analysis, capacity planning, which is really important, intelligent automation. And, you know, we really want to look at the environment and kind of find these problems before they happen. And one thing that's really unique about Veeam One is we just have unprecedented visibility into your Veeam environment specifically. And that's what our slant is going to be today, using Veeam One to dive deeper into your Veeam environment. Now, when I talk about Veeam One, I kind of like to put things into three different categories. So first and foremost, monitoring and analytics, looking all about your Veeam environment, data protection op uh, operations, as well as some monitoring of your vSphere and Hyper-V environment. That's great, and we'll show you some of that. Intelligent diagnostics and remediation. Now, Veeam intelligent diagnostics is one of my favorite things that I'm going to demo for you today. And it's all about finding issues in your Veeam environment before they actually impact you, things like common misconfigurations, and even being able to automatically remediate things in the environment. One great example is Veeam One can actually find VMs in your environment that aren't backed up and automatically throw them into a catch-all backup job for you. So you can at least make sure you're protecting everything at the surface level and you don't have those gaps. And then Kirsten, why don't you tell us a little bit more about documentation? Yeah, Veeam One contains a lot of different reports that you can utilize in your environment. And once you start, once you start adding, you know, the Veeam data protection operations, whether it's backup and replication, maybe you're using the Veeam agents, uh, maybe you're protecting uh, your Nutanix AHV with Veeam. Um, Veeam, will, Veeam One will start collecting data on that environment and then provide you with different reports for capacity planning, letting you know when you know. You might run out of resources and maybe need to look at some more storage, how to optimize your environment to get better performance, and then also change tracking. So being able to see who's making changes to your backup jobs or what they're changing, who's performing restores, are all, all provides more visibility into what's happening in your environment. Exactly. So for our demos today, we're going to focus on three demos. Uh, now and next, right? So I'm going to show you intelligent diagnostics and a little bit of what remediation would look like inside of Veeam One in version 10A of the product. Then I'm going to switch to version 11. I'll show you a little bit more about Veeam intelligent diagnostics and how it's changing, some really great usability features. We'll talk about visibility into cloud uh, backup policies. So what David and uh, Rick talked about earlier, right? We have these cloud native backup products and we're integrating them into backup and replication and thus Veeam One as well. And then Kirsten's gonna talk a little bit more about the scale out backup repository and how we can monitor it with Veeam One. And here we have uh, Veeam One version 10A. So if we come over to data protection view, that's where we're starting right now. And backup infrastructure, we can kind of take a look at our environment as a whole, as well as each server individually. What I wanna come over to actually is this Veeam One agent right here. And this is the agent that allows the Veeam Intelligent Diagnostics to work, as well as the remediation actions that I'm gonna show you briefly. So a couple of different things to notice. This is a pull technology, right? We are pulling our Veeam Intelligent Diagnostics definitions from Veeam directly. It's not a push technology. So like something like NetApp Auto Support, where you actually send your data to NetApp. I only said that because I used to work there for a number of years. Uh, we're not doing that, right? We're pulling the data so there's a couple different ways to do that. If you your server has access to the internet, you can just click update signatures here and get the latest signatures. Or if you're air gapped or not internet enabled, you can go download the signatures from veeam.com, the support site, and automatically import them. 
we can schedule our log analysis to run whenever we like. And this is where we would be able to control the agent installs and uh, install them when they come online. So when we come over to a specific backup server, and I'm going to pick my favorite right now, which is this one down here, and I can come over to alarms. And I see a ton of different alarms in my environment. I actually was doing a demo once and a customer told me that there wasn't enough stuff wrong in my environment. So a lot of my lab stuff is really messy and really nasty looking so I can show off a bunch of these things. So anytime you see this Veeam symbol right here, that means it's something about Veeam, right? It is something alerting you about your Veeam server and all that good stuff. The first one I wanna call your attention to is this backup job enabled, right? I'm sorry, backup job disabled alarm. And basically that's just telling you that you have a job that has somehow been disabled in your environment. And I have a remediation action set to manual, which means I actually have to come here and click approve action to make it run. Uh, we do also have the ability to run these remediation actions completely automatically. And what that's gonna do for me, it's predefined. We have about 10 alarms with these predefined actions. It's just gonna enable that job for me, right? So I don't have any data protection gaps. That's really nice. If we come back to talking about Veeam Intelligent Diagnostics, we have a couple of alarms in here and I wanna show you a little bit more. So this alarm specifically, Veeam console fails to display backup infrastructure components. So this was a known issue after the V10 upgrade. One thing I wanna call your attention to is this signature UID. So it tells you the resolution, right? Just wait 15 to 20 minutes, restart your console and you should be good. But if you did wanna contact Veeam support for any reason, when you go online and create your ticket or when you call in, you give them this signature ID. So when support gets a signature ID, they know exactly what you've run into your environment and they can really streamline the support experience, which is just a really nice feature. So the next thing I wanna do is go to my version 11 lab. So this is uh, version 11 of Veeam 1. And you can see I'm kind of at the view we are, were at before, right? I'm right in the alarms view of Veeam 1. And you can see I have the Veeam Intelligent Diagnostics test signature triggered. That's just a test thing. You create a job in VNR called VID. It triggers this so you know it's working. And one thing I wanted to point out that's pretty cool, just a, a little usability feature I like, the icon for the alarm actually changed. So when we come over to alarm management over here, we can click on Veeam Intelligent Diagnostics right here. And now we have this special little V symbol. And these are all the predefined uh, alarms that we have right now in Veeam Intelligent Diagnostics. So lots of common misconfigurations. Uh, it'll let you know when a new version of Veeam is out. I think in my other environment, I had like, hey, 10A is available for download out. So all that good stuff. And when you see this icon, you know, Veeam has found something for you to uh, take a look at in your environment before it potentially impacts you. Now back to data, data protection view. One thing Veeam 1 is very, very good at is integrating things into the environment, right? So when we have a new feature come out and backup and replication, you can expect to see something in Veeam 1 as well from a monitoring and reporting perspective. So if I come over to this cloud backup policies, I've actually connected my Veeam backup for AWS to my backup and replication server. And since Veeam 1 is taking a look at that, I can actually take a look at all of my jobs in here. Uh, if I had an error in my job, I would be able to expand information in that. I would see it right in alarms. It would tell me, hey, there's something wrong with your job and it would tell you how to fix it. So for example, previously when I first set up the con um, Veeam backup for AWS, I had an issue with my workers. Veeam one let me know, hey, your job didn't run. There's an issue with your workers, just go configure them. Very, very simple to use. Now I wanna talk about reporting real quick before I turn it over to Kirsten because I have my favorite report in Veeam one which is the unprotected VMs report. And that's what tells you what's not protected in your environment. We have that for public cloud data protection as well. So if I come over here to the protected VMs for public cloud data protection, what's gonna happen is Veeam One Reporter is gonna open for me. Really a nice looking uh, HTML5 UI, super simple to use. And if I view this report, it's gonna show me a couple of really important things. First and foremost, it's going to give me a summary of my environment, right? Okay, so I have, Four protected VMs and three unprotected VMs. We might want to take a look at that. So if we click on the tab up here, we can now see that, okay, here are our protected VMs. We know exactly where everything is. Here's the repository. Here's what policy. They're protected by backup and snapshot, last protection date, all really great information. 
the really important stuff is what's unprotected. So it'll tell you right here, hey, here are your instances that have no data protection in your environment. So that's really handy for customers, especially as they're starting to use the cloud native products and move to the cloud to kind of help them find those gaps. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to pause quickly for questions. If anybody has any questions, then I'm going to hand it over to Kirsten to talk about the, about the scale out backup repository. I have a question regarding discovery of cloud VMs. Yes. So if I have, if I'm an AWS or, mm -hmm. or even Azure and I, do I, can I just point it at like the management group in Azure or so you know, you're a actually, hierarchy? The reporting actually comes from your Veeam backup for AWS uh, instance, right? So you need to be using those cloud native backup products. And what you would do is you would install plugin and backup and replication. And that would enable you to connect to your instance of Veeam backup for AWS. And from there, that's where we're getting the data from the actual okay. appliance. So that appliance needs visibility to all the subscriptions or accounts that you want to cover. Yeah, and when you configure that, you know, in your appliance, you'll see, um, you'll be able to say, okay, I want to protect these whatever regions or anything like that. And anything that account has access to, it, the appliance will be able to see and thus um, mm -hmm. you'll see what's missing from a data protection standpoint. Can you exclude certain VMs that you know you're never going to care about? Like if you've just got like a dev, uh, resource group or something like that, or a dev tag. They would still show up in this report at this point. Okay. Do you think that would be valuable though, to be able to say, hey, I don't want to see certain VMs in this report? Or yeah, as a former, uh, whatever we're calling it. As someone who used to manage a lot of backups, the less non-relevant information you can give me, the better. Like if right, it's I'll not important and I don't care about it, don't put it in a report. <laughs> okay. Um, you talked about intelligence diagnostics a little bit um, and how you're monitoring who uploaded a backup. Is this coming just from user login or is this tracking what machine it came from as well? So we're looking with intelligent diagnostics, we're actually looking at the logs on the Veeam server, the repositories and all that good stuff. So we're looking specifically at log data. So we have a bunch of reports from an auditing perspective too for activity in the environment. Um, where you can load this report and it'll say, hey, you know, Rick logged in at 2 a.m. and restore this VM. So it's really great kind of visibility into some of that as well. You know, what's cool about that report too is that um, it will show you if someone had access to that data. So say you're backing up your exchange and someone actually went into that backup file and they didn't restore anything, it'll actually show you that they even accessed that backup data in the first place. And if they didn't restore it, then that's like, well, why are you looking at that data? So just for more visibility into what's going on. Yeah, are you guys gaining other any other um, information on activity that happened with the data before between backups? Um, so we actually can do a lot of just monitoring in general of all the data. Kirsten and I actually wrote a white paper specifically on ransomware monitoring with Veeam One. Uh, there's a couple of pre-canned alarms that you can do, and there's a ton of other custom alarms and reports you can build. Uh, this is very customizable. And if that's something you're interested in, uh, Chris and I would love to spend some time with you offline and dig deeper into it. Yes, definitely. I okay. look forward to it. Do you have also, sorry, do you have also intelligence or a view on uh, when storing data in a public cloud? It's important, of course. Uh, to keep uh, the cost under control of how many capacity that you're using, how many data gets in, how many data that gets out of it? Yeah, so when we're talking about costing, uh, we have some great information in the cloud native backup products. So when you create a cloud native policy, it will tell you specifically how much that's going to cost, right? From a worker perspective, from a data transfer perspective, everything you need to know. So that's more built into the cloud products at this point than Veeam One itself. Going into that, so Veeam is on the move. Um, Veeam is um, more and more uh, broadening uh, all the products that you have. Will that go into Veeam One as well? So, is that something you think would be valuable? I think so. Yeah, okay. a lot of customers are still looking into um, hybrid environments. So, yeah, for me, that's important. Okay, cool. Um, so I know Melissa showed you uh, Veeam One Now, and this is Veeam One Next. And for those of you who might have noticed, um, Veeam One Now looks a lot different than Veeam One Next. And that's just because we've really enhanced uh, the user interface, not only in the monitor, but also in uh, Veeam One Reporter as well. 
So if you kind of think back into uh, Rick's presentation, he talked a lot about Scout or backup repositories. And one of the cool things in Beam 1 is it really provides visibility into the backup infrastructure and its components. So if you take a look at the data protection view on the side here, you actually see we can see our backup repositories, our AWS repository, which is hosting our um, Beam backup for AWS uh, data and our backup jobs there, our backup proxies and our file proxies. So if you're backing up any NAS device or anything like that. So you gain a little bit of visibility into the infrastructure components and how they're performing as well. Um, in this view here, you can see your overall job status, your virtual machine jobs, and your agent jobs. But what I really wanted to talk to you about is the backup repositories. Um, in our environment, you can see that we do have that scale backup repository added in. Um, you can also see if you have any external repositories and any regular backup repositories. And a regular backup repository is just going to be a simple repository. Um, maybe it could be a Windows, a JBOD, or anything like that. Just add it in on-prem into your Veeam backup infrastructure. You can see how many virtual machines and computers we're storing in those repositories, and also the amount of data we are backing up. Um, and you can see, like, you can see too, just you know, some general information about the used space on those repositories. Now, Rick talked a lot about the scale up backup repository and really adding in that archive tier in version 11. So we added actually visibility into um, that repository within Beam One as well, because Beam One is a really powerful tool when it comes to monitoring the efficiency of data protection operations. So if we click on our scale up backup repository, we get a general overview of how that repository is configured. You can see um, the repository type, uh, the backup fi files placement uh, for this scale up backup repository. We're doing the data locality uh, file placement, just making sure that we're keeping our full backups with our incremental backups on uh, that repository. You can see what type of extents we have. We have two performance extents, one capacity and one archive. And if you remember back into Rick's presentation, the performance extent is going to be that on-prem storage, the capacity extent, you know, object storage, and then the archive extent being something like AWS uh, Glacier and different things like that. How many virtual machines we're storing in that scale backup repository? And then also just a little bit more details about the amount of space that it's using. You also get this capacity planning uh, section here, really allowing you to identify maybe when you need to reevaluate uh, the amount of space that you have in your repository um, and things like that. So allowing you to forecast for the future. So if we drill down into our specific repositories, so if I take a look at this object storage repository one here, you can actually see that this is the capacity tier because it's, it's Amazon S3. You can see the region, the bucket, um, if copy mode is enabled, if encryption is enabled, the amount of used space, et cetera. And then over here, you can actually see we did have some data copied over. So we had some data copied over today, actually, um, within, into this repository. Now, if we take a look at a object storage repository too, this is really going to be our archive tier. Um, it's going to Amazon S3 Glacier. You can see the bucket and then when, if any of this data has been archived to um, this uh, object storage uh, bucket here. Unfortunately, our archiving po policy hasn't hit in yet. So that data hasn't moved into um, that bucket yet. But when that um, policy is hit, that data will start offloading into uh, the archive tier. Another uh, important uh, feature that has been added with version 11 is uh, the Scallop Backup Repository Configuration Report. So if I come over here and click on Reports Configuration, I can actually run this report here um, to give me a little bit more information about the configuration of my Scallop Backup Repository. So if I select Infrastructure um, and then Backup Infrastructure and then click View, I get this really um, structured, formatted report that I can take a look at uh, to give me a little bit more information on my environment. 
So this is something too that you don't necessarily have to go into Veeam One and run every day just to get it. You can actually set this up to get email to you um, daily. Maybe you want to get an email to you maybe every Friday just to check check on your configuration, how things are um, going. So you can see some statistics here, your capacity tier, how many capacity tier extents, how many jobs are being stored there, your resource statistics, um, how much data is being stored where, extents. So you can see actually our two performance tiers that those are the um, storage that's on-prem or you know, sys shares. Um, you can see our object storage and our policies used. So giving you a little bit more of extra data that you can you know, take with you. Um, and then you also have the second page here, um, really giving you a little bit more detailed information on the tiers um, and how they're configured into um, Scala Backup Repository. So this is cool down here too, just seeing the size of your backups and uh, what's being stored, um, how much data is being stored where. So hopping back into our presentation. So that's just a couple of features of Veeam 1, V11 that we talked about, um, but there's a lot more. So one of the really big things of Veeam 11, Veeam Backup and Replication V11 is um, CDP. And I know uh, back in, I think it was November of last year when we were doing Tech Field Day in Silicon Valley, um, I think Anthony had talked about uh, the CDP support within Veeam Backup and Replication at that event. So if you're not familiar with that, uh, definitely check out that previously recorded video um, from Tech Field Day. But Veeam One's going to be providing visibility into those CDP policies. So just making sure you're meeting those SLAs, making sure the proxies are performing as they should be, and um, gives to you a little bit more of alarms and some reporting. You also have enhanced VMware Cloud Director support. So currently right now you get that visibility into those vCloud Director backup jobs, but now we're gonna add a little bit more visibility into vCloud Director replication jobs. One thing I did mention is that, you know, Veeam is really great at when a new feature comes, it kind of comes out, integrating it into Veeam One and maybe into either uh, other products as well. We might see a little bit of that a little bit later. So these are our some favorites. There are so many new features coming to V11. And next slide, please, Kirsten. Uh, if you like Veeam 1, please join us on Twitter. We guarantee you will learn something about your environment that you don't know. There is a 30-day free trial of Veeam Availability Suite, which is backup and replication plus Veeam 1. And use hashtag Veeam 1 COTD on Twitter. That's Veeam 1 Catch the Day. And you can see all the crazy things we find with Veeam 1 inside of there. And I think that's about all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you have any questions that we don't have time to answer, please uh, hit us up on Twitter, use our hashtag, and we're gonna be happy to get back to you and go more into in depth into anything you saw today.